Hi there. I wanted to take a second to do the traditional content warning of just giving you a general upfront of the types of topics we can cover. Not necessarily that we will, but if we do, it could come seemingly out of nowhere. It might seem that way, but uh, topics discussed can include um, f uh, physical abuse, verbal emotional abuse, sexual violence, domestic violence, uh, suicidal ideation, and self-harm. So if these, whenever these topics are too heavy for you, you know, it's okay to turn off the show, but absolutely get yourself some help. But other than that, hopefully you enjoy. Thank you for listening. sure what I'm supposed to do with this puzzle book after I finish it, but I'm almost done. That's cool. I'm kind of thinking, I'm <clears throat> not sure, what am I, what, what do I do with these? What do I do with it? Keep them? I, I don't know. <laughs> Throw them out? <laughs> I don't know either. I guess it's kind of, like, I, I hear that joke a lot about what do you do with, like, birthday cards or something? Like, how long am I supposed to keep this before... Oh, we, I keep we both, those forever. I do too, but I know <laughs> yeah. that like the joke is like, do, do, how long? We both know I'm gonna throw this away. How long is it mm -hmm. appropriate for me to keep it? I don't know. That's up to you. How much uh, sentimental value does, that does a you? puzzle book have? Not very much. Yeah. Then you can probably just throw it out, yeah. like ASAP. <laughs> I'll probably keep it, just because I'm a fucking pack rat. So. Yeah, there's a book I have that I need to finish. It's called uh, Burn After Writing. I have one of those. Okay, yeah. yeah. I might I might start looking at questions in this. And then I recently got like a shadow book, shadow work <laughs> journal. Well, I might add some of that stuff into this. I think I did on this Burn After Writing. I did like two pages and then I got discouraged. Yeah, I would. I flipped around in it. I didn't do it mm -hmm. all at the same time. Yeah. I found this other one. It's uh, 300 writing prompts. I found it at Target. Ooh, okay. So they're pretty interesting questions. Yeah. You might be able to pull some of yeah. those out too. Okay. I might have to look through these books and see <coughs> what I can use. Yeah, my work schedule is about to change uh, when I go... Uh, come back from my trip out there. I'll have to see what days I'll be available to do like the episodes because they're moving me back to daytime. I'm not very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> not happy at all. I'm like, I'm close to just quitting my job at this point. There's a lot of shady shit going on at my store and I don't like it. Yeah, if that's <clears throat> the case, it might be time to get out of there. Yeah, I just feel like I'm probably the next person to go. I got thrown under the bus by a new, like, store, one of our new, like, assistant store directors, so he got into my boss's ear, and then my boss told me, oh, you're not doing enough work overnight, so we're pulling you to come back to the daytime, <laughs> and I'm like, <sighs> but and then I found out my boss is... And then I just found out my boss has been doing some shady shit, too. I'm probably the next to go because... Yeah, I guess my boss likes suck-ups after all. Oh. Um, he doesn't like people who question him and all of this stuff, so I'm like, I'm probably the next person to go. Because I'm not afraid to cuss him out, and I think <laughs> I already have a couple times, so... Oh, especially if the assistant is the little fucking weasel that kind of mm -hmm. directs your the director's ire. Yeah, but he's also trying to get our store director, which is our boss, out of there, too. He's been throwing him under the bus, too. Oh. So I'm like, there's just a lot of weird shit going on. I'm like, man, this is some dumbass, like, retail politics or the dumbest thing on the planet. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I really like want, it. I want nothing to do with this bullshit anymore. I'm like, I'm not going to be... And then I recently uh, talked to one of my friends. I'm like, I'm just probably going to demote and go just regular employee to the overnight team. This stress is just not necessary, and I don't want to deal with all this BS going on, you know? Yeah. 
I need to find a job. I need to figure out something where I am my boss, and that's and that's it. But I don't know what to do. Did you see that? Uh, oh, no. did you see that cut on I got on my hand? Oh, I put it on Instagram. I took the foster kitten back on Saturday. Oh, oh yeah, I did see that. Yeah, because it like scratched you, right? He got me fucking good. I've I've been scratched by kittens, but holy shit, this is this was serious. I've been scratched by cats of all ages. Uh, dog bites, pretty minor, but yeah, it's uh, this one was pretty rough. Um, I think I was last chance for that foster. Oh, dang. They're going to take him back to wherever they found him. Yeah, Cause poor kitty. He, he gets along well with other cats. Yeah. So in the unlikely event that he gets adopted, he cannot be alone. And oh, but he has to have like someone. Another cat with him to yeah. hang out with because he's not going to come around with the people. Gotcha. I had him for at least a month, and on the even at the last day, he would not let me pet him. Oh, dang, okay. There was no amount of anything I could do to get him to, to like me. Yeah. It's the first time that I, I returned a cat that's Aww. not a little fucking ball of love fluff. Yeah. It's the first time. It's, it was it's disappointing. Yeah, I could imagine. <laughs> All right, let's fucking do the taco thing. All righty. Energy, energy. We're fucking vibrant young people. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, let's get into this. My name is Leo. I'm joined by my cousin, Lily. We are going to be making our sixth recipe of hard shell tacos. What kind of tacos are these? They're the kind of tacos that like kitten claws cut you to the fucking core that's that's what we're getting into today yeah you're just like that one time i want to say like four episodes ago or something where i was clearly in a particular mindset uh i think if you're looking at the questions you could see i was in one as well here yes yeah dearest listener you're gonna have to catch you'll you'll get there you'll figure it out when we get there so our intro as always how are you feeling from our last recording to now on a scale of one to five for me it's been a freaking whirlwind these last couple of days so i'm gonna put myself at like a two or a three two two point five or three if i let me see if i can describe how i feel now from the last episode very confused very confused <laughs> confused and stress or stressed is probably the fucking right word about the work stuff um, Yes, okay. yeah, there's a lot of BS happening at my job, and I really don't want to be a part of that company anymore. Gato. There's just a lot of crap happening at my job, and I, I'm i starting to feel like it's time for me to go on a new work adventure, you know, seek yeah. out something else, something better. So that's where I'm at with that. I'm, com I <laughs> I'm coming in at a three. I would say the word would be dejected. I'm having different difficulties, but difficulties at work myself. T struggling to focus again. Like after, I think the week before, it was doing pretty well, but I'm not sure what happened. And I've kind of lost lost track of myself. Gotcha. So I'm going to have to buckle down again and finish the week strong. Yeah. But I did yeah, see like to... Taylor Tomlinson, the comedian, on Sunday. That was fun. Oh, I did see that. Yeah. How was that? She's hilarious. She's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. I will say, I also, um, well, that was more like last week. I went to go see City in Color. Is that a movie? Um, it's a band. Oh, okay. Yeah, the guy, the front man's name is Dallas Green. He used to be like the lead singer of a band called The Lexus on Fire. And then he just ventured on to do his own thing. It was like, it's very like chill, you know, music, mm -hmm. um, which was nice. It was a good concert. I went with one of my really good friends who had an extra ticket. I'm like, yeah, I'm always down to go to any concert. Yeah, pretty so. much anything would be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the only like plus side to my last, well, that was last week. Yeah, I am, I am looking forward to go seeing the Foo Fighters though. 
Yeah. yeah on October. Like, I'm really excited for that. Cannot wait. Um, I had a little Mitch McConnell moment. Kind of froze for a second. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, Lupin purring into the microphone is perfect. Uh, on the MMA show that, that I do, part of the broader Lux Media environment, one of the guys, he lives in the UK, and he does his cat sometimes, very rarely now, but does jump on, and he's very vocal. So yeah, we started referring to him as the uh, senior MMA correspondent. There we go. Is Brock. Yeah, Lupin's a, a podcaster in training. <laughs> <laughs> he's an intern. Yep, he's an intern. That's right. All right, let's get into these questions here. Uh, uh, uh. What do you think you contribute to the world? <laughs> oh, you can go first on that one. <laughs> I would say, even if it's, I think it's fleeting, but I would say joy or momentary happiness, fleeting happiness. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, like the volunteer work that I do doesn't really have, lasting effects it's just something that you do in the moment yeah so for some for the mo for the majority of them it's it's like senior citizens and other people in that are like sick in hospitals mm -hmm. so i can't i don't know i can't really do anything that's going to have a long lasting effect but i do know that for the yeah. short time that i do interact with them that it it does help a lot in that moment so fleeting uh, temporary respite, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what I contribute to this world, so I might have to pass on this question. You contribute um, a lot of curse words at work? That's pretty good. I mean that. Yeah, <laughs> that. Um, I mean, I guess when I was a massage therapist, I contributed to a lot of healing. Yeah, that's, that's a good <laughs> um, one. But so I'll probably just go with that. I sometimes really miss doing that job, but it was doing my body more harm than good, and then it doesn't come with health care, you know, so. Right. But I do miss it sometimes. Yeah, it has its pros and cons, but I do, I did enjoy, like, the clients that I have and being able to help them, like, either get rid of their migraines or help them walk better or get rid of their pain or just be someone they can talk to. That's pretty cool. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, moving on. What feels like therapy but isn't? For me, it's this podcast. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I've mentioned it a few times, but for me, it's this podcast. I think it's, it's kind of challenged me a lot more to really delve further and deeper into, you know, what I need healing with. Way better than the therapy I did try to do, so... For me, it's this podcast. This podcast and making music or listening to music is another one. Okay, that's good. I was going to ask uh, what besides the podcast, because you have mentioned that. So, mm -hmm. But that's good. Ma making music is a good one. Uh, mine is, I think I think this one was kind of inspired by the last time we recorded when we, when do you feel most like yourself? Yeah. Or your most authentic self? And, yeah. yeah. That was... Uh, writing for me making music for you mm -hmm. uh, i don't know this is kind of like writing in a way it's yeah just, it's more in <clears throat> motion though mm -hmm. yeah i would writing is yeah that's got to be it for me if that besides this which caveat for anybody this isn't a substitute for like professional help <laughs> If, if you need help, then go True. fucking get it, dude. I, there's <laughs> not much I can do for you. Yeah. I don't know. I can hand you a fucking dick out there or something. I'm like, yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Uh, keep... Like, I know eventually I need to probably go back into therapy. I just really need to look for the right person. I know that takes a while. Yeah, but it's rough. I kind of, I'm pretty, you know, aware of what works and what doesn't work for me. I don't know. We'll see if I go back into therapy, but for now, I think I'm doing all right. <laughs> That's what I've been yeah. doing. Yeah, if you're if you're feeling all right, then mm -hmm. can't really say fairer than that. I always think about going back and doing it more, but it mm -hmm. 
at the same time, I feel like I don't need to, and that it would yeah. just be kind of, I don't, I don't know, like a, a quick assessment. Like, mm-hmm. do, is this something that I need to continue doing, you know, in yeah. your professional opinion? But like, it's not a very pressing issue, I suppose, mm-hmm. is how I would put it. Yeah, like when I was doing it, I was told, you know, that I've already done like a big chunk of the work that I need to do on my own. So I'm, I don't know. I might try to look into like EMDR therapy. EMDR is weird. Some, yeah, yeah. I, I have a cousin. It. I have a cousin on my dad's side who did that, and it worked for her. I just need to look at all the different types of therapy, especially for people with, you know, PTSD complex trauma like myself um to see what would really work ketamine therapy is pretty awesome <laughs> really yeah. i've 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 read up on that stuff that sounds interesting too uh, mdma yeah, I'll, therapy I'll... is coming out of uh clinical trials so that, okay that's yeah also have, coming up yeah i have heard about that too but i think i'm all right for now i don't know maybe i just like to deal i don't know there's, I'm just weird. I like to just deal with things as they are and just work my way through it and through all of my emotions. So I I don't know. It's like weird. I just raw dog everything in my life. So I think, I think that's why I like therapy. I'm like, I don't know. I'm just really stubborn and I know myself. I mean, there's I've been through a lot of stuff where I should have probably had therapy my entire lifetime, but I'm like, I'm doing all right <laughs> for now. Like I I like with my ADHD, you know, I've freaking gone this long, you know, without medication to like deal with it and like my anxiety and depression and now with my endometriosis, I'm not taking any, you know, medications for anything. So I'm just gonna keep raw dog in life. Like I'm all right. I'll be all right. Man. That that's a what actually got me in trouble was raw dogging it. Yeah, that's what uh, got me in the hospital. Yeah, I mean I haven't gotten that bad like with my issues in a very long time. Like yes, it's always in the back of my mind, but I know I'm not gonna act on it, and I just do whatever it is that I need to do to get me away from that mindset and it's usually just isolating myself for a bit and doing things that'll take my mind off of those thoughts and allowing myself to get that deep into those thoughts because I mean I I still deal with a lot of that but I try to distract myself from it as much as possible maybe I Uh, yeah, I, I might need to look into some therapy <laughs> to see what I can do about that. And yeah, I was, I was actually just for... gonna suggest like uh, if you're only doing things to keep your mind off of it, I don't know. Are you like you're you're attacking the symptoms, not the yeah, not the root cause, not the actual thing? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I was doing with uh, <laughs> with alcohol, which does not mm-hmm. work. <laughs> yeah, that's just a terrible <laughs> idea. I feel bad. I better drink. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to know about someone that you've been too afraid to ask? Oh, shit. This would be a question for both of my parents. But, ah. like, I would really... Because I've heard very, very teeny tiny stories from other people in our family about what was done to my mom. I know that she got it worse than everyone else. And that trickled down to me, unfortunately. Um, but I would like to really know what happened to her. If she even remembers these things, because I'm sure she's got a lot of shit locked out, you know. And then I would also like to know more about, like, my dad's childhood. Because, like, when my grandmother died, I kind of, from my other cousins and stuff, found out that my grandmother really did everything for her fucking seven, eight kids by herself, you know. And my grandpa wasn't all that great. So I would like to ask my dad what kind of shit did he go through as well. Because I know there's some kind of abuse or trauma that happened with, you know, him and his siblings as a kid. But he won't, he doesn't bring a lot of that stuff out. So I would just like to ask my parents just 
tell me the story from me, your perspective. Tell me, tell me the story. Like, I, I obviously know the whys of why my mom did stuff because she didn't know any better, but, I mean, she could have changed either way. But I understand the whys of her, but there's just, like, stuff about my dad's past, too. Like, I'd probably be more geared to ask him these questions because my mom will most likely shut down and just... She won't ever probably talk about it. Maybe my dad won't either. But I would like to find out more about my dad's childhood. What, if anything, happened with your upbringing with your dad? Really makes me think of the quote that you had sent to me. So I put it on here. Mm -hmm. So in quotes, but it made you stronger. And then I was a child. I didn't need to be stronger. I needed to be safe. Mm -hmm. I think uh, what you just described about both of them it really makes this resonate more. I think of the same thing with my own father and his troubles, mm-hmm. uh, which were many, but at the same time, like when, when I think about this, like I know the whys, like you do, I understand why he is mm-hmm. that he was that way, but mm-hmm. it only Wouldn't makes... Wouldn't you want to do better, you know? Exactly. Like... It may, That's what makes me so angry about those things, about him, mm-hmm. him, not just him, but just abuse in general. It's like, how the fuck do you endure this? yourself yeah. and then you perpetuate it you know and how you fucking it awful it is yeah why would and you like do that's that? that's another question i would like to ask my mom you know about her dad because i heard for, i've heard little snippets here that he wasn't the best <laughs> really he was not the best guy but i don't know that any details of that so i would like to i would like to learn more about i guess origin both my stories patern- yeah like paternal and maternal grandfathers i'd like to learn more about them but from i from what i get is that our grandfather wasn't the best but Why that's all i've heard was i named after him then <laughs> i don't know i don't know it is a great name though i know um, I'm, I'm making it great again <laughs> yes you oh <laughs> but yeah from what i hear i don't think he was all that great Man, i don't I... know exactly what he did but i just know he wasn't all that great I had heard that he was, uh, like, the, he w- was obviously a flawed person in yeah. that our grandmother from our shared side is, mm-hmm. was, like, his side piece. In, oh, shit, to, I didn't know that. To put it in a way. So, okay. But other than, I, like, other than, like, it's a, like, it's okay. Besides that, though, like, he... I was told, I don't know how true this is, that he was generally okay. I mean, I don't know what's true okay. either. Yeah, yeah, I don't know either. Because I know our shared grandmother had kids before him. Right. His kids are your dad, my mom, and our aunt. That's why they're, well, that's why our dad, your dad, my aunt are the lighter complexed ones. And not so much my mom, but those three were his kids. And the other four children were from a previous relationship yeah Yeah. but i yeah i would like to learn more about both of my parents upbringing like i know my i know with my dad they were very poor they grew up on a farm they pretty much grew up like pioneers they did everything they knew how to like churn their own butter grow yeah they're very self-sufficient people i actually love that but i just want to know more about you know how were they treated as kids and stuff like that yeah, the, not oh. the resilient part of it, but the no the vulnerability. Like, yeah. yeah, I would like to learn more about that. Like, I know with my dad, they didn't really express a lot of emotions. He's he's kind of emotionally emotionally unavailable, so he doesn't really say I love you that much and stuff. I mean, now that he's older, he's gotten a little bit better with it, but he's just very closed off with his feelings, and it's because of their dad all of my uncles i only have one they only have one sister i have a lot of uncles on that side and they were all mama's boys biggest mama's boys so that just makes me feel right there like she was really the one doing it all while her husband did who knows what that's something i would want to ask both of my parents is like take me further into what your childhood was like because it'll probably (laughs) answer a lot of questions for myself you know it would be very eye-opening put my anger towards you into a better context please mm-hmm. yes yeah because <laughs> that's what i would want yeah that it's yeah i think my questions that i'm too afraid to ask would be similar 
what are what is the sequence of events that led us to where we are now what made you completely fine with acting like i was fine when you yeah. fucking knew i wasn't you had yeah. to have known i wasn't all right <laughs> let's get <laughs> i was feeling some kind of way with this one <laughs> so we're starting our heavy section how do you define love I mean, I don't really know because I've never really experienced what that truly is. When you say you <laughs> haven't experienced it, do you mean familial sense, romantic sense? What are we talking about? Both. My entire life has just been me being gaslit, abused, all of that. So I don't really know what that is because of how I was raised. I don't know what that truly looks like. Right. And then the last relationship that I was in, I thought I knew what that was too, but it was just a continuation of abuse. So I don't really know what that means to me. If I could, I, I mean, I guess with... We did talk about I it could... a bit last time with how like you express affection or how you show people you yeah. care. I think that's a that's a good starting place. For me to feel that reciprocated, I guess I would just need someone who's very compassionate, understanding, empathetic, who will not judge me, who will be there for me with a listening and understanding ear, who will prove that they have my back, I guess. Just someone who's truly on my side. I've, 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 uh, I've been burned a lot by friends, family, whatever, so I'm still trying to figure out what that definition is to me, but if I could pick some characteristics characteristics, <laughs> sorry, of what that would mean to me, then it would be those things that I just said, but for now I have no clue what that is because I wasn't genuinely showed that. The only ones who really show me love is my animals. <laughs> That's about it. It's not a very symmetrical I... relationship, though. I would say that I have been in love before, yeah. and it's difficult putting it into words. I think it's uh, when it, when you get to a point where you care about somebody more than yourself. Mm -hmm. Like when I was in those situations, the only thing that I wanted was for them to smile. Yeah. And to be around me and be happy with me. And mm -hmm. I, like, I'll do anything you want. If it's going to make you happy. <sighs> like pretending that you're not married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Stupid bitch. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'll take it. I'll take that into the next question of what's your biggest relationship fear. And mm -hmm. so with with like the I kind of said it jokingly, but I also uh, I joke about it to try to control, to have mastery over it. That yeah, my biggest fear is, I guess, not just rejection in the in in a superficial way, where like mm -hmm. if I were to go to a woman in a bar or something and say, "Hey, can I get you a drink and we can chat or whatever," and she says, yeah. "No, I don't care. That's fine. We don't have to talk. It doesn't bother me." Yeah. But when I when I, when I had fallen in love with a married woman, I was given so many assurances and promises of, you know, the, the, this thing is, this rela this, that relationship is over. You are, you're the only person I'm focused on and that kind of thing. Yeah. And so I invested a lot of myself, not just my time, but also my emotional energy into it. And then... I was rejected mm -hmm. so it's like I, I made myself completely vulnerable to you and for after that I was fucking mortified of doing it again uh, it actually did ruin a few relationships for me so gotcha okay another one though is I am afraid of being like my father a lot I really worry about that a lot yeah, I'm I'm right there with you with my mom. Like I'm terrified, especially if I have a kid. You know, I'm terrified. I'm gonna turn out just like her. Do you have another relationship fear besides that one? Another one is kind of like you being rejected, but more of like being lied to. You know? Yeah. And like <laughs> knowing that I need someone to know that they're really in it with me and that their feelings are genuine and that they're not doing it just to get something out of me 
or to just use me for whatever, you right, know? Right, right. Because that's really the story of my life there. So that, that's one of my biggest fears, just getting into a relationship with someone and then just finding out that they're just using me the whole time, you know? Um, like maybe revenge for her husband cheating on her, maybe? <laughs> Who yeah. knows? <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but I... Yeah, that's my answer for that one. Uh, okay, so if you're, that's your fear of, you know, being strung along and used, what makes you feel safe? What would make you feel safe and let you know that you're not being used that way? Someone who's honest and open about their feelings, who isn't going to beat around the bush with their intentions with me. Um, I actually, I actually scared off a lot of people because when I would use like the dating apps and stuff, I would straight up ask these people, what are your intentions? Because I'm not going to just be, you know, yeah, someone for you to use and like hang out with until you meet someone else or whatever. I'm like, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I'm, so in order for me to feel safe, I need to know that you're really in it. Is there, um, and and that, besides words, is there any way that they could demonstrate that to you? I guess their actions, like, I don't really know how an action. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose. I think it's something but, that you would see. Like, I read this in a magazine back when magazines were a thing. I was reading, like, how do you, like, how do you know that this dude is in it for the long haul? It was written from a woman's perspective. And okay. they said, well, think about what they're prioritizing. Does, is your guy buying a new car, like a new muscle car or something? Or is mm -hmm. he, like, maybe looking at a house in a neighborhood with better schools? Yeah. Then, yeah. So you're seeing what this man prioritizes mm -hmm. compared to... Because anybody could just say, like, yeah, I want to be with you forever and let's move in together and shit like that. But, I don't know, like a fancy condo in the city, maybe not the best place to raise a family. I suppose that would be the the way, the actions that someone could take to demonstrate. Yeah. And it's but and what's good about it, I think, is that those are they're not directed as in like you mm -hmm. have to prompt them to do something or any like they're going to do the thing that they that they want to do. And yeah, if they want to be with you. They're going to work towards making that a more stable situation. <laughs> Magazines. <laughs> uh, I think uh, for me, it's emotional vulnerability reciprocity mutuality and symmetry those are the three words mm -hmm. i always use whenever dating apps or whatever ask you know what are you looking for in a relationship i want mutuality yeah. i want reciprocity and i want symmetry that's a good one those yeah. are good ones so you know, like if i'm doing fucking everything then i'm it it's gonna take me a little bit because i'm a fucking bonehead but I'll figure mm -hmm. it out. I'm like, man, I am just putting all the effort in here. And I don't know what this new term, passenger princess, I don't know what that is. Is that what I'm talking about here? Hold on, old person going to Urban Dictionary. <laughs> passenger <laughs> princess. A pretty girl that has no other job but to look pretty in the passenger seat. A girl who doesn't know how to drive, so her dude drives her around. And she just sits in the passenger seat. Oh, God, that's disgusting. I'm uh, sorry. Okay, so that's not what I was talking about. Kind of. No. <laughs> yeah. But, but also not. Uh, still, that's, that's a really shitty thing to be. And it's I've, yeah, I see right? women actively aspiring to be that. The fuck is your problem? That's disgusting. It's like, have some independence in your yeah. life, all right? <laughs> like, I could not do that. Like, one thing about me, I need space. As much of it as I can get. <laughs> that's, like, that's where I use the word symmetry. Yeah, that's pretty much how my last relationship was like. I literally did everything <laughs> while this fucking guy got to do whatever he wanted. And it was just disgusting. And of course, he made it seem like he was doing everything for me when it, in fact, wasn't. <laughs> but I'm so letting you I'm do done... my laundry. Don't you understand? That means I love you. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, I I don't like that. Uh, I wouldn't either. Uh, shit. I think yeah. Once our once our long term visions start lining up, that's 
when I feel safe, which is like right. what I described to you with the house and car situation. Mm -mm -mm. Anything, anything else before we move into the light section and get on out of here? Not really. <laughs> All right. So we're still a bit removed from October, but I don't give a shit. We're going to do Halloween-ish themed things. <clears throat> Who would you like to haunt if you were a ghost? Who would I like to haunt if I was a ghost? If you oh, were a God. ghost, who would you haunt? I don't know. I probably would have a long list. I would definitely haunt the people who have done me wrong, for sure. So uh, you would be a like, vengeful poltergeist. 100%. 100% <laughs> 100%. I would... I would definitely do that. I'd probably haunt my loved ones in a nicer way, but right. I'm definitely going after all the, you know, shitty people that have done me wrong. So maybe you write for, sure. for your loved ones and you're haunting them in a nice way. You write, I love you, you know, like on the wall or in the mirror on the in the bathroom when they're like showering or something, but you write it yeah. in blood. There you uh, go. So they know that you love them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably, yeah. That's what I would do, yep. Yeah, I uh, had the similar thoughts. I would like to haunt Chino Moreno, the front man oh, for God. Deftones yeah, and stuff. Because yes. I want him to write a fucking album about me fucking with him. <laughs> That's what I would want. Like, That's yeah, uh, Yes, I, the album would be titled fucking Ghost Lion or something, I don't know. But that, it would be 100% about me fucking with him, and it would be great be their best album ever that's funny <laughs> other than that um i yeah i think uh vengeful po poltergeist is one and i don't know if i would want how how do you haunt someone in a helpful nice way i'm not sure what that looks like i don't know maybe like if you're able to see that something bad is going to happen to them or if someone you know they have in their life is a piece of shit you could just let them know in a weird way, you know, like, hey, leave this fucking person. Spooky <laughs> ghosts can life. open, unlock iPhones. Look at that. Yep. Look at him. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's sending dick pics to some other chick. Yep, that's probably something. And they were solicited. So he that definitely means something's up. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking, like, you, I don't know, you open the door for them. They, they're walking to, the, to a house with their hands full and you open the door for them. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I wonder if they would, like, shit their pants when they see the door open and no one's there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. Aliens ask you to take them to your leader. Who are you taking them to? Uh, you can answer that one first. <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a list of, of that, too. Oh, man. So aliens land in my yard for whatever the fuck reason. And they're like, hey, uh, who's in charge of the humans? Can you can you point them out, please? And I would say, well, you're fucking talking to them. It's right here. Uh, I am the manager, as a matter of fact. So that yeah. now, now, now that I have the the full confidences of the alien delegation, and the by extension the alien population. Now, if I if I want something done, if they want something done, they're going to talk to me. And then I could just tell any world leader I want, hey, you're going to do yeah. what I want you to do. Or, uh, you know, Klaxar up there is going to really fuck you up. What do you think <laughs> about that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's the alien equivalent of, like, I'm, I'm going to get my homies and we're going to beat you up. That's all it is. Yeah. I mean, I kind of have the same response as you. I would say me, but I would also want to know what their intentions are first it's like why like i would ask why do you need to know who the who the leader is like what are your uh, intentions if it's good ones and i'll be like yes it's me if it's not i would probably i always assumed i assumed in this question that their intentions are benevolent yeah because if they wanted to do something bad they have superior technology in every sense so they could just do it. They don't need anyone's that's, permission. I mean, yeah, that's true. But yeah, I would probably say me. <laughs> yeah. I guess the to pick someone other than myself, I would say Chino. Again, write an album about aliens, please. Oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> I really need to see him in concert. Like oh my dog my that... goodness. My dog that passed, his name was Chino Moreno. Because he liked... He would perk up with Deftones. His favorite song was Diamond Eyes. 
Diamond Eyes like is a good would, one, though. He would really perk up to that song. But, I, I mean, they're one of my favorite bands, too. Uh, and I have yet I have yet to see them, uh, but I would really like to. I've seen Deftones multiple times. Yeah. Um, I've seen Crosses, one of, one of his other bands. I've seen them once. Okay. I think they've only toured once. Okay. Now that I think about it. I liked his band Palms. Palms, like, I like them. I like that too. Yeah. Yeah, I like that too. Then he had another one that was like Team S- Sleep. Team Sleep. Yeah. Yeah. It's more like trip hop. Mhm. <clears throat> but yeah, they're yeah, that, they're good too. That's a that's another bucket list band I need to see for sure. Yeah, it it's uh it's, it is a bit of a gamble cuz there I have seen Chino come out to perform completely fucking shit housed. Yeah, it, uh, he was stumbling over drunk. Oh it, my it goodness, it was it was bad. Uh, like I know when um when I lived out there in Arizona, a couple of the times that I wanted to go see him, he had to cancel his shows because he was always fucking sick. So like, I remember that um, that tour. I never got the a lot. yeah yeah I never got the opportunity because that was one of the concerts I want really was you know, ready to go to. And then I just come to find out that he's fucking like sick all the time. I'm like, man, this fucking guy. Well, I, ga- I gave up on Deftones, but I do want to see them though. Uh, nah, yeah, they're worth, definitely worth it. They're, they're yeah. so good. Okay. If you were a doll or action figure, your choice, what accessories would you come with? <sighs> Jesus. Um... <laughs> Definitely some ADHD. I know that's a... I'd be like ADHD anxiety Barbie or some shit. I don't know. Mine would come with an instrument of some sort. It would also come with, like, sunglasses because I'm very sensitive to light and I'd rather just have my sunglasses on all the time. Wouldn't those sunglasses be, like, plastered on, you know? Permanently Uh, fixed on your your face? No. No, you could probably just take them off and on. It would come with regular, you know, glasses, because I am blind, and sunglasses, but the sunglasses would probably stay on more. Um, what other accessories would it come with? Um, it would come with a couple of an animal or two or three or five or seven. <laughs> um, let me see, another accessory... It would also come with handheld video gaming console, since I do play a lot of nintendo switch that's all i can think of <clears throat> mine would be a microphone for sure a fountain pen a nice one a typewriter maybe or a journal okay. and the voice bubble overhead says i'm complicated <laughs> or something <laughs> that's a good one. Oh uh, man i don't i'm really not sure otherwise in a lot of Band shirts, band T-shirts. Oh yeah, mine would have a lot of graphic Fuck T-shirts a load of and band, band T-shirts. Yeah, yeah. Those were all the rage when I was in high school, in like the mid aughts. Yeah. It was um, I had the only like I think the only one I had was uh, it was a Stewie Griffin from Family Guy. Oh yeah. And he says something like um, I have a surprise. It's in my diaper and it's not a toaster. <laughs> that, was, that was great. This was the pinnacle of humor. Yeah, I have a lot of somewhat graphic t shirts. I have a couple Harry Potter ones. I have a Daria one. Daria. And then I have I have a lot of like Volcom shirts and band shirts, sports shirts. Uh, I wear I'm a definitely the definition of a t shirt and jeans gal. Yeah, you won't catch me dressing up too, too often, because that's just not me. My mom was the same way. I mean, I was a tomboy. She was a tomboy. But yeah, graphic t-shirts, man. Yeah, I had a shit ton of those in high school, too. And after. Speaking of graphic t-shirts, because I'm really good at segues, we need to come up with some designs. I was about to ask you that. <laughs> yeah, because we have uh, on our site... We have for our boxing show, B-Sides Boxing and Ultimate Fucking Casual for MMA, we have those. A lot Mm -hmm. of different, a lot of options, but we don't have anything for the tacos. We need, I need some kind of taco graphics. 
but I'm not sure what if there's any any like phrasing or like words to put on it or just a giant mm -hmm. taco or I'm not sure. I might have to listen to the other intros that you made with this podcast because today you said these tacos. Something about these tacos won't scratch you like they'll, a cat or something. They'll cut you deeper than a cat. Oh yeah, there uh, you go. Than a kitten claw. Uh, yeah. I've also done like squid tacos because we're talking about squid game. It's just like it's you know it's fine. I'm I'm just super talented and I make it work every time. You know. That's that's true. <laughs> that's just how I get down. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh. Um, yeah, I would like one of those fucking weird sayings. I don't know would be cool on a shirt or even just the taco yeah just the taco logo i wouldn't mind like a t-shirt with like a little pocket on the front okay and on the outside of the pocket put a taco in there with yeah. the name on it i'll figure out some other ideas but that's one that i can really picture i would wear the hell out of that one all right this is a t-shirt with a pocket with a taco and maybe if you like open up the pocket it'll have one of your weird <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Okay, now with that, uh, let's get our housekeeping shit out of the way. Uh, LBXmedia.net is where all that stuff is. Right now, that site is geared really heavily towards uh, fight sports because that's how I started this whole thing. So, yeah, you know, if you want to pretend you like fight sports because you think I'm really cool, then you can go listen to those. Uh, socials, LVX Media Net on everything. I got a random notice today uh, from Threads that, uh -oh. that Shannon just hit us up. I don't Who's know. That? I don't know. I uh, just know that uh, she is a single mother to three kids and uh, okay. two animals. Big ups to you, Shannon. Okay. Well, yeah, that's it. Uh, as for contacts, the number is in the outro. You can call or text. Uh, it's 833-589-7637. You could go to the website and go to the tacos page, and there's an email option and a phone option there as well. So with that, parting words. Send us into the week oh. strong. It's almost fall, y'all. I don't know. People really like the fall, so... <laughs> it's almost spooky, spooky month. Yeah, spook, uh, October spooky season. That was... Uh, I, I'm worried that it's going to get uh, monetized and companies are going to start using that. And it's going oh, yeah. to ruin it for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for October because I make that entire month my birthday. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> my since my birthday's on the second, it's my birthday every day this month. Every day, yeah. I would. Yeah. Oh, mine's in the middle, so I can't. I could. Yeah, mine's. Yeah, I um, <coughs> I like to tell my, my mom uh, that I'm I'm her late birthday gift because her birthday is literally to the day a week before mine. Really? <laughs> yeah, her birthday's on the twenty sixth of September. It's almost fall, y'all. Yep, it's almost fall, y'all. I don't. I, it's a trivial hill, but I'm. This is the hill I'm dying on. I don't. I refuse to call it fall. That's autumn. Autumn. <laughs> it's autumn. It's autumn. It's the autumn. It's the autumnal equinox. It's otoño. Yeah, it's not fall. Oh, that's right. This Saturday, the twenty-third, is the first day of. Uh, yep. First official day. Autumn. So yeah, it's fall, y'all. It's autumn, y'all. <laughs> That, does, uh, that doesn't work quite as well. Uh, I kind of like it. Autumn, y'all? <laughs> yep. All right, well, let's go with it. Do all the internet shit, like likes, follow, subscribe, all that bullshit. If you could please, it'd be very much appreciated. Leave us messages if you want us to talk about something. We definitely can. If you have questions, leave those for us and all that jazz. All right, if there's nothing else, that's going to do it for this recipe of hard shell tacos. Thank you very much for listening. Got you on the flippity flip. <laughs>
Thanks for listening to this episode of our podcast. If you have any questions or comments on what was discussed, or have a topic you'd like to hear on the podcast, you can leave a message on our unattended phone line at 833-589-7637. That's 833-LUX-PODS. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to LVX Entertainment.